What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another ad hoc OBIEE video. Today, I'll be talking to you about count functions and how to apply those to get our roll-up metrics. So as always, I invite you to log into the live site and follow along with me on your end. Now, you can see here, I've already applied some basic columns. I have full name, current rank, ETS, and I got soldier home UIC. I've also applied a basic filter here for MPC is equal to E so that I'm only looking at enlisted members for this report. Now in this example, I'm only looking for those members with expired ETSs, and then we'll get into how to apply some count functions to give us how many expired ETSs are within a group of UICs. So first things first, I wanna show you kind of a more advanced filter than we've covered in previous videos. So if you hover over your ETS column and select filter, Keeping in mind that I want to filter this report so I only see expired ETSs. Most of us would start with this operator ID and say is less than or equal to, and then select a hard date. The problem with selecting a hard value for a date is when I open this report tomorrow, it's going to be inaccurate. There is a way to set up this filter to always be operating off of the current date so that no matter when I open this report, it's always going to be live. If you come down to convert this filter to SQL and check that box and select OK, this option gives us the ability to customize our SQL statement or filter, and we can say our ETS is less than or equal to current underscore date. So current underscore date is the equivalent to sys date for those of us with SQL experience. This means that no matter when I open this report, it will always be operating off of that current date and time that you open your analysis. Select OK. And check your results. So you can see here, I only have those ETSs that are less than or equal to today, giving me my expired ETS list. Go back to criteria. So now we're gonna talk about how to apply count functions to our reports. So in your subject area, if you search for ETS, you should have an expired ETS and expired ETS or MRD count function. Now, whenever you see this ruler icon within your columns, all that means is a count or aggregate function has been applied to this column. So IPSA has already done the work for us and it's already applied a count function to expired ETSs. So if I bring over this expired ETS column, and check my results, you should see a number one has been applied to every row with an expired ETS. Now, the only thing I would caution you on with this is this being ad hoc OBIEE, it's usually on about a 24 hour lag. So if you have an expired ETS as of today, you might see this expired ETS number has not changed yet. So right here is a good example. This ETS is on 10 March, and my expired ETS number has yet to change over to a one. Usually that takes about 24 hours to roll over. Now, if we go back to our criteria tab for a second, even if a count function has not been applied to the column that I want in IPSA, I can customize it or add a count function to any column I want. For instance, if ETS had not had a count function applied to it yet, I can simply pull over another ETS column. And if I hover over my toolbar and select edit formula, highlight my entire column, and I have an insert function 
option down below. So I'm going to insert my function. And you can see here, there's a variety of different functions that we'll get into in future videos. But for our count function, if we hit our aggregate dropdown, there's a count option in here. Now, any one of these functions, very similar to Excel, will tell you what it is and what it's looking for. So in this case, it's going to count any expression we put in there. And it defines expression as any type of data field. It can be a number, it can be um, text value, it can be anything. So just give me an expression and it's going to count it for us. Select OK. And in this case, we're going to count our ETS date that we filtered for expired. Towards the top, you can customize your heading and change your column heading. So I can change this to count ETS custom, select OK. And check my results. So you can see here it's added the number one for us again all throughout this report. So now that we have a count function applied to it, we can get creative with our pivot tables. So if you hover over on your bottom left and I'm going to insert a new view and I'm going to insert a pivot table. Now, no different than our table views that we've already covered, I can customize this table view to read anything I want. Now, when it comes to roll up metrics, we can't count too many rows or columns because our count functions are trying to do too many things. OK, so we want to minimize the amount of columns or rows that these measures are trying to count. So in this case, I'm going to get rid of rank. So I'll drag rank down to my excluded box. I'm going to get rid of ETS. And I'm going to get rid of full name. And I'm going to get rid of that custom count function that we applied. So we can see here now that we've minimized our rows to only UICs, now I have roll up numbers for expired ETSs. You can also get creative with your totals. So if I want totals for my rows, I have my rows icon here for totals. And if I select before or after, it should populate the total expired ETSs for every row that's within this report. So you can see here, it gives me a grand total. You can also tie a visualization to your pivot table. So up towards the top, you have your graph icon. And based on my measures that I've applied here, it will tie a visualization to it. And I can customize that visualization however I want. Make it 3D, I can make it triangle, rectangle, I can change it from vertical to horizontal. However you want your report to read, you can customize that. And it's all based on the columns that you've selected within your table. Select Done. And now you can see my new view has been added and I can drag and drop that wherever I want into my analysis or compound layout. And this is what it looks like. So keep in mind with your count functions, you can get as creative as you want. And even if IPSA has not added a custom column for you for a count function, you can add it yourself through that formula um, that I showed you earlier, and you can use it for anything. You can use it for military education, civilian education. The count function you apply will count any column, and then you can get creative in your pivot table to show the visualization of results. So that's all I have for you on this video. Hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, if you did, don't forget to give us a like. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I truly hope you're getting something out of this video.
out of these videos, even if it's just one small thing. Um, I, I think that's making everyone better, even if you remember or get one small thing out of these videos. So thanks for your support. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully we'll see you on the next video. Dependent serve.